Hi, I'm Scott Whittle, and today I'm going to go over the important features of the species accounts, which are the heart of the Warbler Guide. My co-author Tom and I spent a lot of time optimizing this section to make it easy to use and effective in helping with identification. So let's take a look at one of the species accounts and its component parts. Here we're looking at Blackburnian Warbler. At the top of the left page, we have the bird name and Latin name, and the season and age or sex that is being shown. For many birds, this line will just say, quote unquote, all birds, because they don't change much in plumage between individuals. But if the species is sexually dimorphic, which means male and females look different, or if the plumage changes drastically between seasons, then we actually create a whole other section for that different looking plumage of the species. In this case, we have both a drab and bright account for Blackburnian warbler, because both bright and drab versions of this species can occur in spring and fall. The next thing you'll see here is a row of icons, which are intended to help you quickly see certain characteristics about the bird. For example, we have an undertail icon that shows the undertail pattern. We have a silhouette of the bird, a map that shows you the bird's range. For example, this bird is normally just found east of the Mississippi. A habitat icon to show which part of the canopy this bird is typically found, in this case high up in the canopy, and a behavior icon which identifies special behaviors the bird might exhibit, which could help with an ID, for example, if the bird chronically pumps its tail or if it creeps along a tree trunk. Another useful icon is the color impression icon, which gives you a general map of the bird's color pattern, and this can be especially useful when you only get a quick or partial glance of a warbler. Below that, you'll see our three master views of the bird, the side view, 45 degree view, and underside view. We feel that it's important to show all three angles rather than just a traditional side view, since we often see warblers from below or at an angle, and there's often a lot of diagnostic information in these views, really just as much as there is in a side look. Anyone who has done some warblering knows that you often get obscured or partial views of a bird, and being able to use multiple angles greatly increases your chance of making an ID. When there is a diagnostic identification point, that is a point that would identify the bird solely on its own merit, we have a check mark next to it. Now on the right side of the page, we see a whole set of smaller photos with identification points and notes, which we think is important to give a sense of what the bird looks like in the field and to supplement some of the information that we've had on the left side of the page. On the top of this page, we have what we call distinctive views, which aren't always diagnostic, but are very typical for the species. So if you glimpse one of these views, you could narrow your choices down considerably. Now let's go to the next spread for Blackburnian Warbler, and you'll see that there are comparison species on the left side and maps and aging and sexing on the right. The comparison species are a crucial part of our system. They collect all the possible confusion species in one place for you, so if it's not on this page, it's probably not a bird that you might confuse with Blackburnian Warbler. Underneath each of these comparisons, we have notes that help you learn the key differences between Blackburnian and the species it's being compared to. On the right side of the spread, let's take a look at the aging and sexing section. And this is exciting because it's the most complete illustrated aging and sexing section of its kind. There's a book called The Pile Guide, which is used by bird banders to identify birds in the hand. But much of this information is not really suited for a field birder. We adapted this section to work for someone using binoculars or a camera and we focus on the points that are visible and useful when using those tools. Another important feature of this section is that we also point out when it's not possible to separate ages and sexes, and also when care should be taken, since this can be a very tricky area of study. Finally, we have the map section. We have either one or two maps for each species, depending on if there's a difference between spring and fall migration. The migration bar gives you general migration timing, early, middle, or late, to help give a sense of when these birds are showing up and for how long. And finally, unlike most guides, we've included South America in our maps because we think it's really valuable to see the global picture of where these birds migrate to and from. Now let's turn to the last spread in the species account, which is on bird vocalizations. As you can see, Blackburnian has several types of songs and that we also include all the audio comparison species that might be confused with Blackburnian, just as we did with the visual comparison species. Our audio system also includes a set of symbols beneath the sonograms to help understand what's going on in the sonogram, and also extensive notes on how to read the sonogram and find the important and diagnostic separating points when studying a song. We've also included the chip and flight calls, which are extremely useful short vocalizations commonly made by many warblers. 
I hope this overview has shown how the Master Species pages can really help get all the information you need about a specific warbler. We hope that they'll be useful for both beginners and advanced birders alike in improving and expanding their knowledge and identification skills. Thanks for watching, and welcome to the Warbler Guide.